After the first ever explosion of the atomic bomb, Julius Robert Oppenheimer, the creator of the atomic bomb, recited the line, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Less than a month later, more than 200,000 lives were lost to the technology created by the Manhattan Project. Engulfed in secrecy, the Manhattan Project was one of the most controversial projects that was ever carried out by the government of the United States. With Oppenheimer directing the project, the horrifying experiments that were carried out directly led to the creation of the atomic bomb and the devastation that followed. Today, we will uncover the lesser-known forgotten facts and the terrifying truth about the Manhattan Project that changed the world forever. Before we start, click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. When the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, America was fearful about the capabilities of German scientists. At the time, the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, received a startling letter from Albert Einstein with an urgent message saying that he suspected Nazi Germany was stockpiling radioactive elements in hopes of creating a weapon of mass destruction. What was more significant in Einstein's letter was that American physicists had discovered that uranium had the potential to generate unprecedented amounts of energy that could be used in creating the world's strongest bomb. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, the United States joined the war alongside the Allied forces, and in 1942, the Manhattan Project was officially born, bringing forth an atomic revolution shrouded by secrecy, espionage, and a whole lot of controversy. Oppenheimer was selected to direct the Manhattan Project. He was an extremely intellectual man with a forte for theoretical physics. Before being appointed as director, he had already been working on nuclear fission, the powerful release of energy caused by the splitting of an atom. The Manhattan Project stood out because it wasn't purely theoretical. Its purpose was clear-cut, build an atomic bomb before the Germans. Within a year, it became the number one priority during the war and got all the green lights. The research was mainly centered around the fission of uranium-235 and plutonium-238. The project's goal was to produce a chain reaction from splitting these atoms to release enough energy to trigger an explosion. Despite its name, the Manhattan Project took place all over the US, Canada, England, the Belgian Congo and parts of the South Pacific. But its most famous research facility was the Los Alamos National Laboratory, where Oppenheimer carried out his work. At its peak, the Manhattan Project employed 130,000 workers, and the U.S. had spent $2.2 billion to produce the bomb's little boy and fat man that would eventually fall on Japan. On July 16, 1945, scientists detonated a plutonium bomb over the small town of Alamogordo in New Mexico. Never before had humanity possessed a weapon that posed a threat to global civilization. The test's success meant an atomic bomb was ready to be used by the U.S. military. The following month, on August 6, 1945, the bomb was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. 140,000 people were killed, many vaporized. Thousands more would die in pain from radiation poisoning in the months and years that followed. Three days later, the second bomb fell on Nagasaki killing 74,000 people with equally devastating effects. Japan surrendered six days later, abruptly ending World War II. Despite the controversy surrounding the research and deployment of the bombs, there exists another equally or even more contentious aspect of the program that is often overlooked. During that period, the project encountered significant challenges in handling newly discovered elements like plutonium, which posed unknown health risks. Regrettably, the U.S. government resorted to human experimentation, disregarding the well-being and safety of individuals involved. The leaders of the Manhattan Project understood the necessity of measuring the impact of radiation on the human body, and in 1942 established a division to protect the health of workers and the public from radiation. 
They were also tasked with studying potential hazards to establish tolerance doses and develop methods of treatment. Ironically, the medical team of the Manhattan Project concluded that, in order to do all this, controlled human experiments were necessary. Between 1945 and 1947, 18 individuals were unwittingly subjected to plutonium injections, while several others were exposed to uranium, polonium, and americium. Experiments were carried out at various hospitals across the United States affiliated with the Manhattan Project, with full awareness that plutonium could be carcinogenic or even fatal to the unsuspecting subjects. Among these subjects was a woman named Janet Stott, who remained unaware that plutonium coursed through her veins. The dose she received was 56 times higher than the radiation an average person absorbs in a lifetime. For the next 29 years, Janet endured excruciating pain, battling cancer that ultimately claimed her life. Tragically, just like Stott, None of the other test subjects were informed about the substances they were being injected with. To grasp the shocking nature of these experiments, it's essential to shed light on some of their stories. One such instance occurred on March 24, 1945, when Ed Cade was brought to a hospital in Tennessee following a car accident that resulted in bone fractures. He was selected as the primary subject for the first human plutonium experiment and assigned the codename HP-12, with HP denoting human product. Cade was administered 4.7 micrograms of plutonium, nearly five times the human body's limit. The doctors involved did not anticipate him surviving for more than 10 years. Tragically, eight years after the injection, Cade succumbed to heart failure. Similarly, Albert Stevens received a plutonium injection in California only a month after Cade. He was misdiagnosed with terminal stomach cancer, which later turned out to be just a benign ulcer. Stevens was never informed that he did not have cancer, but was instead given a dose of plutonium-238, ultimately leading to his death, also from heart failure. Among all the cases, the most dreadful one involved Simeon Shaw, a four-year-old afflicted with terminal bone cancer. He was flown from Australia with the belief that he would receive the finest available treatments for his condition. Tragically, instead of the promised care, he was subjected to a fatal plutonium injection, sealing his fate. Simeon passed away eight months later. The other human test subjects faced similar fates, either succumbing to the toxic effects of radiation or enduring lifelong illnesses as a result of the experiments. What makes this even more distressing is that human experimentation was justified under the pretext that all selected patients were terminally ill, a claim that was far from accurate. Many of those subjected to these experiments were misdiagnosed, and numerous errors in procedure, research, and documentation cast doubt on the experiment's efficacy. The leaders of the Manhattan Project argued that these experiments were crucial for advancing nuclear physics. However, there was a glaring lack of follow-up research, and a significant portion of the samples taken from the injected victims ended up contaminated or destroyed. In essence, they ruined people's lives for no meaningful gain. Even after the Manhattan Project achieved its primary objective and World War II came to an end, human experimentation persisted well into the Cold War era. Disturbingly, evidence indicates several large-scale projects across the United States that failed to inform their subjects about the health hazards of the experiments they were subjected to. Among the most shocking instances was a government-sponsored study intentionally exposing a school for disabled and special needs children in Massachusetts to radioactive iron and calcium. Oppenheimer was aware of the nature of these experiments, but he made it clear that he did not want them conducted in his laboratory. Moreover, there is evidence suggesting that he personally approved shipments of plutonium and uranium to be utilized in human experimentation. Due to the veil of secrecy surrounding the project, determining the exact chain of command is challenging, but sufficient evidence points to the involvement of all the health and medical directors associated with the Manhattan program in this research. In the end, 
the families of the victims received compensation from the government, with a total payout of $4.8 million, which amounts to a little over $9 million in today's value. Oppenheimer initially expressed guilt over his creation. A decade later, he appeared to distance himself from personal responsibility, pinning it on the state saying, I carry no weight on my conscience, our work has changed the conditions in which men live, but the use made of these changes is the problem of governments, not of scientists. After the war, he became a key advisor on U.S. atomic policy. He headed the principal advisory committee of the successor to the Manhattan Project, the Atomic Energy Commission. Around this time, Oppenheimer opposed the creation of the hydrogen bomb. Producing another weapon with the potential to be a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb was unfathomable to him. Not long after, he was wrongfully suspected of being a communist spy. With his security clearance revoked, he settled in New Jersey where he lived a quiet life, and he died at his home in Princeton in 1967. Today, the Manhattan Project is heralded by U.S. officials for the crucial role it played in ending the Second World War. But the controversy that surrounds it is still prevalent. As with all wars, the innocent ended up paying the heftiest price. Many also argue that the success in developing the first atomic bombs led to the Cold War and the nuclear arms race. The threat that followed is more real than ever today with fears that Russia could use nuclear weapons in Ukraine, while North Korea's missile launches are also highly concerning. The Doomsday Clock warns that we are getting closer to destroying our world. Tell us your thoughts about the Manhattan Project and the development of nuclear weapons in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.